Assalamu alaikum. Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Ali Magabal. Uh, today, we'll uh, look at um, turbo codes, LDBC codes, trellis coded modulation, and then we'll look at uh, concatenated codes. We need these codes because they're going to be concatenated. So let's start with the turbo codes. Remember, we have convolutional codes. The turbo code has an encoder and a decoder. We're just giving a simple idea about the turbo codes are. So turbo codes is made of, if this is a source of information, we're going to pad that just to complete a block. And then we have one direct information line. So it's a systematic code because the information appears as one of the bits. And then we have one convolutional encoder and another convolutional encoder. But watch, before we use the second convolutional encoder, we have interleaver. And that will help also on burst errors. So the turbo encoder is made of two or more convolutional encoders. And they are concatenated together. They are connected together. So for this code rate, we have one to three bits, one third. Now, of course, we're going to collect these bits and multiply them. We, we can do also functioning or just parallel functioning where we, have, we are selective. Or we just take all of them. So if we have parallel to serial multiplexing, we take all these three bits and we send them on the channel. So that's the transmitter. Now, how do we conv how do we decode this turbo encoder? We have the incoming data, we have the outer convolutional encoder, and then we have the interleaver. This is again the the, the, the this is again the sort of uh, transmitter, inner convolutional encoder. So this is kind of repeating the same thing but in a serial way and then we have it go when it goes to the channel we have noise interference and what have you and other sources of error now here comes the turbo decoder shown on inside the circle in the turbo decoder we get the data we use an inner decoder and then of course we deinterleave the data we use an outer decoder again back to interleaver and the, the process continues, so we have iterations. So we have iterations of decoding. The first iteration, second iteration, and so on. So this is the, the turbo principle. Remember in, the, in a mechanical engine, or the turbo engine, you try to take the power, the heat, and convert back, make use of the lost power, and use it again. That's the turbo principle, and hence the name to turbo decoder or turbo codes. It comes from the decoder rather than the encoder. We are not going here in details, but just showing you the, the basic structure. So it's basically made of two convolutional encoders. And the, the, the beauty about that is that the more iterations we have, the better the estimation, because every process seems to be independent of the other because of the interleaving, as if we are decoding again. Now, Going over uh, some of the notes here, that the carrier to noise ratio, even at close to 2 dB over a node, we still can maintain very low bit error rate. So for carrier to noise ratio greater than 2 dB or even less, it depends of course on the details of the system, we can get acceptable bit error rate. Remember, this is the encoded system. These are the known um, techniques and if you go to turbo code you're getting very close to channel remember the channel limit is one, minus 1.6 in the second diagram here i'm showing you the impact of iterations so with one iteration with one loop we can get with two iterations then four eight the more iteration we do we still get improvement in the performance of course you want this curve to get to the channel limit so you're just showing you the impact of iterations Of course, to do this decoding, this required powerful digital signal processor. But luckily, these days, we have lots of resources in a mobile phone or a small system because of the advances of in digital signal processing. The turbo decoder can also be used for other decoding principles to, um, to decode serially concatenated codes. So this is just one example. The turbo decoding principle can be applied to other uh, two convolutional codes, as we, sh as we show here the encoder and the decoder. Next, we will introduce another code. The low density parity check coding, we're not going here into the principle, just but we're just comparing with 
Turbo codes. So Turbo codes and LDBC codes are the most powerful available codes for forward error correction. Of course, so far, this statement changes with time. So as we have newer codes, uh, to give you an idea about the, the dates of uh, introduction, we have the Turbo codes. It was in the 1993. Okay, and we have the authors who introduced uh, the code. And then, then, of course, there are lots of people who continued working, improving, uh, improving on the code. For the DLDBC code, it wasn't uh, uh, far from there. It's about 2001. This is just rough numbers. And these are some of the references that you can read about LDBC codes. LDBC codes allow links to operate not just at 2 dB. They can go with a carrier to noise ratio, C and R set for carrier to noise ratio, as low as 0 dB with still acceptable bit error rate. We're saying acceptable for many applications. Remember that 0 dB is only 1.6 dB above channel limit, which says that there is a very little room for improvement. We're getting close to the theoretical limit. LDBC coding was selected for digital video broadcasting uh, uh, satellite number two standard over turbo coding for its better error correcting performance and lower decoding complexity. So we're getting both. But of course, there is no free lunch. Uh, if, of course, CNR is close to zero, then turbo codes appear to have better performance. So there is a trade-off. In general, LDBC is better, but of course, there will be some regions where they cross over and the, the winner will be the turbo codes. The third type we just want to mention again is the trellis coding or coded modulation, where we, compi where we combine coding with modulation. So we have two examples. We have 8PSK on the right, and then we have 16 QAM on the left. So what is trellis coded modulation? We have this constellation diagram, and we do th we go through a trellis. We go through a certain sequence. Not all sequences are possible, so we employ a high level of modulation, such as 8PSK or 16PSK or 16 QAM, and allow only certain sequences of modulation to be transmitted. Of course, if only certain modulation are certain sequences are possible, any sequence that's not possible is considered an error. So we're combining modulation with detection. Coding gain can be achieved with a small increase in bit rate. That's the main advantage. We still have excellent uh, spectral efficiency. Okay, and uh, there is some limitation on the application uh, as a negative thing, but of course, things are also changing and we see adoption of these technologies uh, or techniques in, uh, in new systems. So for example, here, if you're sending 16 QAM, for the first bit being zero or one, then you're going to send one of these constellation, others are not possible. And then for the second sequence, zero and one, it, it goes from one possible constellation to another. Uh, so which makes some sequences possible and some others are not possible. So if you want to, trans to transmit 000, then you go through these uh, transitions. And for example, here, if you want to send 010, you go through these transitions. That's the basic idea. If you're interested, there are lots of videos that explain trellis coded modulation. We are interested in sharing with you some of the techniques that can or are used by satellite communication or wireless communication in general. Okay, so um, now even those codes are excellent, we can still get better performance by concatenating them, which means using multiple codes at the same time. So the diagram shown here on the left is the digital video broadcasting, uh, the first system, satellite, where we have concatenated for our control systems. And also the second version is shown here. So concatenated forward error control FEC structure is used in digital video broadcasting satellite either version one or version two in the television standard. The structure here is shown in A and the newer one is shown in B with which is also using 8PSK. Okay, so I'm showing that in both of them there is interleaver and remember that interleaving is important for burst errors. And this is shown in blue here. We have interleaver, of course, and we have to use the deinterleaver. We use the interleaver between the two concatenated codes 
here in this first standard to make sure that these codes can uh, augment each other properly and can stand for random and burst errors. In the new standard, we are using the read Salomon code, and specifically we have 204 to 188 uh, error detection code, and I'm showing this in red. The BCH code is shown here in, uh, okay, so the BCH code is shown in purple. So this is now red, and this is purple. And uh, the BCH is after both Chaudhary and Hogingham, and they are, they are used to correct to, to do burst error correction. So these codes are now replaced with BCH in the new standard, and also with LDBC code, instead of convolutional standard codes. LDBC, remember, stands for Low Density Parity Check Codes. As you can see, with the development of uh, coding techniques, things become uh, possible, which were not possible before. So thank you very much for um, your uh, listening, and we'll, show, we'll, we'll see you in coming videos.